I do enjoy a shoot 'em up, even though I'm not particularly good at them, but I do enjoy the challenge. And the latest game from 1CC Games, Space Moth Lunar Edition, is a great one for beginners right the way through to pros because it's got a flexible scoring system and a way how you can use the different weapons to basically tailor the difficulty by antagonising all of the enemies that you come across. It's the latest one from 1CC Games, and I really enjoyed their game Star Hunter DX that came out last year. Now, Space Moth, I believe, preceded this, but it had a Lunar Edition that then came to consoles afterwards, so I think that's your timeline sorted. But it's a fabulous game for single players to take to the leaderboards. In Space Moth Lunar Edition, you play as one of two different ships that you can choose from. They do have slightly different shooting patterns and also different speeds of movement. And both ships can be moved on the eight directions of the compass. In Space Moth, you have two different types of attack weapons, and they very much fall into the style of gameplay that you want to have. If you're new to um, shoot maps, you might want to go down the I'm just surviving and trying to get to the end of the game route. And if you do that, you'll largely rely on the laser. The laser is narrow, but it's the most powerful weapon that you have, and it, whenever it attacks an enemy, it just reduces their HP until they die. Uh, very traditional, very straightforward, very cookie-cutter shoot 'em up But there is a hidden kind of high-score system that is quite unique, I think, in shoot 'em ups or at least for the ones that I've played. And this revolves around the secondary weapon that you have, which is your more traditional bullet shooting. Each of the two ships has two very different distinct patterns of shooting. One is slightly more um, flared out like a fan, whereas one goes up in columns. And when you hit enemies with these bullets, they basically get angry instead of getting hurt. They do get hurt, but it's at a much lesser extent than if you just use the laser to try and go through and kill everything. And so at some point the enemies will then go and then they get angry and then they turn a shade darker in colour compared to what they were before. The technical term for this is soul draining and what this means is that you can then switch to the laser and then do like a power attack at the end and this boosts your high score because you get bonus points for clearing things as this. There's a secondary part to your high score chasing as well which revolves around those bullets that I mentioned earlier. Whenever you kill or hit any enemies with those bullets, a ring starts to grow from around your ship and it's almost like a force field that's ready to be activated whenever you want it to. And I primarily used it throughout the game for whenever there was waves of bullets that I just thought, <laughs> there's no chance I can get past those. And what I would then do is hit a triangle, because I was playing it on PlayStation 4, and what that would then do is it would turn all of the bullets that was within that sphere, that, that circle, into skulls, and that would boost up my multiplier that was on the top left hand side of the screen. So what you would be doing is if you was going for like mega pro version of playing these games is combining that skull circle mechanic alongside the soul draining mechanic to like boost your scores and your multipliers at the same time to get absolutely crazy high scores and attack some of the leaderboards that you're going to have. Now that's all there for you if you want it, but if you're just going around to survive, that is perfectly fine too. Just stick with the lasers. You've got bombs at hand as well, which turns everything on the screen that's a bullet into a skull and fires it at the enemy instead. And that's really great for bosses because you can use it strategically to get yourself out of trouble with waves. And um, while all of this can kind of help and you can use it strategically and in really good timely fashions to get yourself out of sticky situations. You can't absolutely spam everything in Space Moth like you can in a lot of other shoot 'em ups because there's no limited, unlimited, sorry, continues. You only get three lives per continue and three continues and then it's game over. And a lot of the trophies and achievements are around you basically doing very good with either not using the lasers, not triggering the skull attacks, not dra soul draining certain types of enemies, and so it adds in all of these extra challenges that again go above and beyond the basis or the base level of the game. 
Outside of that, you've also got plenty of different graphical options for if you want scan lines in your games or not. I'm personally well beyond that fad now and prefer a clean screen, but it's there if you want it. You've also got tape mode available too, um, which is great for those of you that want to spin your TV round on 90 degrees, uh, but you're going to have to also like physically do it on your TV as well because the control scheme doesn't map with it, so it is a real true tape mode. Uh, quite enjoyed the soundtrack, although it didn't necessarily stick with me beyond playing the game itself. Really liked the theming, the way how all of the enemies are of plant life, uh, and the fact that you then go off into a final battle against the moon, but you never actually truly beat it. It's basically a survival of the fittest to see if you can survive until the timer runs out. So yeah, thoroughly enjoyed this. I recommend getting these two games as a duo, actually, both this one and Star Hunter DX. Um, I believe they're available as a duo, at least on PC. So yeah, if you're a fan of shoot 'em ups or you're looking at a good place to start, these two games and anything so far from 1cc games that I've played definitely fits the bill. Thumbs up. Written review will be over on highplanegames.com very shortly. Until then, you guys take care. Bye. Higher Plane Games is part of the Higher Plane Network, a completely independent media outlet supported by people like you. The goal is to create the best possible content that cultivates a richer indie scene for games as well as music and entertainment. To find out more and to get involved, visit patreon.com forward slash higher plane network. Your support makes all the difference and in return you'll gain access to bonus content and downloads. Thank you for watching.